What's up, everybody? You're listening to episode 12 of EBPR, Everything But Politics and Religion. We'll talk about things such as international relationships, Mm -hmm. the newest cooking gadgets. Yes, indeed. Living the lavish life on a budget. Yeah, we will. And the resurfacing of Trump's sexual assault accusations. Well, Uh, one of them anyway. uh, According to sources, hashtag 45 may have to read what he has. Wait a minute. Uh, Is there a problem? Yeah, uh, this is everything but politics and religion. And while I know that Trump's going to hell for that religion, um, Trump is still a political figure. So those two things we're just not going to talk about. He's a political figure. Y'all really put him in office? Number 45. Yeah. So he's Uh, somebody's politician. And we we just don't we don't touch on that here. This is a safe space. All right. Well, let's let's save some space and. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. (laughs) Anywho, today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com forward slash EBPR podcast. There are over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, Alexa, or MP3 player. Yes. Today's podcast is also brought to you by Texture. Enjoy over 200 magazines anytime you want with the Texture app. Start a free 14-day trial today by visiting ebprpodcast.com slash texture. I'm Des. And I'm Jasmine. Let's start the show. Hello, Des. How are you doing? Hey, Jasmine. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing great, you know, living life, life living. Um, I'm going to be in these streets this weekend <laughs> at PodCon, a podcasters convention here in Seattle, where I get to meet up with some fellow podcasters, um, Steve from Baked and Awake, Elise from Unreasonable Fridays, and Derek from Single Simulcast. So one of my favorite, yes. favorite podcast media people, Francesca Ramsey, is going to be in the building, and it's just going to be like a great convention in seattle for podcasters and people who love podcasts so i'm just so excited to have my face in the place if you are there and you know you've given us a listen and you see me um let me know that you listen and i have some special swag for you quink 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 yes but in addition i am super super excited about our guest today we have um someone very very important um her name is queen thrifty she's reigning from the great state of ohio hashtag midwest she is a successful side hustler by day she's a strategic project manager and by night she's a free-spirited influencer she loves travel loves to stretch them dollars loves to tell others how they too can save a buck and live that lavish life welcome to the show queen thrifty hey y'all Yes. How are you doing today? Doing very well. Doing very well. I saved some money. So that's always a plus. (laughs) Hey. That is always amazing. Okay. Yes. (laughs) All right. Well, can you tell the EBPR listeners a little bit more about yourself and what you do? So by day, as you said, I am a project manager. So I work to um, deliver a product service or result for a particular company that I'm working for. And by five o'clock, I am Queen Thrifty and uh, run a lifestyle and travel blog focused on life and adventure at an economic splurge. Oh, okay. And uh, we cover topics such as product reviews, uh, travel savings, live shows, red carpet events, and upcoming movies and entertainment. Okay, I see you. Okay. Hey, <laughs> I'm down for all of that and then some, so uh, yes. I'm here for this. <laughs> Wait, can you tell us how you got into this uh, this field? Oh, uh, well, I got into blogging when I decided that I was overspending and um, I decided I wanted to save a little bit of money. So I started out couponing and then the blogging came along where uh, I started working with brands and I've always been in promotions. And I noticed that there was an outlet to share, you know, my thoughts and feelings with people. And I'm not a video person. Um, so I started writing about mm-hmm. it and I found that people were interested in it. So it stemmed from there. Nice. All right. So you mentioned that uh, you've done product reviews as well on your blog. 
Can you tell us about uh, one of your favorite ones? Ooh, so one of my favorite um, product reviews, I work with Ninja. And so the new Ninja Kitchen IntelliSense system is one of my most recent favorite reviews. It comes with a spiralizer. Um, it's a food processing system. I can blend some of my favorite one cup size smoothies. Um, I've done pasta, you name it. Um, there's a full review on the holiday gift guide on queenthrifty.com under the home tab and health and fitness. That sounds awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah. I need all the reviews I can get because I'm tired of buying stuff online and, you know, it gets here and I'm like, oh, yes, let's spiralize these veggies. And then it's extra ratchet and it doesn't work at all. And I'm like, OK, well, here's the knife that I'm about to <laughs> slice my finger on. So right. or or you slice your finger using the zoodle thing. Oh, don't. Yo, like I did. I thought to. I was the only one. I had to throw <laughs> out all of my zoodles. Throw them all out because that was not pasta sauce on the zoodles. That was a little bit of meat. No. But see, that's when you just throw it Look. out of the window and you go to Whole Foods and buy you, a, a, you know, the fresh noodles that they make and put in the bin. Yeah, that's what I had to do. No, I, I don't know that because ain't nobody over here shopping at Whole Foods. And by over here, I mean, Des is not shopping at Whole Foods, y'all. It's expensive. <laughs> so just so you guys know, since we're talking yeah. about frugal. Um, there is ways to save at Whole Foods. What? I'm kind of planning in advance. There are some changes now working through Amazon. So if you're a Prime member, you can go through Clip Coupons on there. And then also with the fruits and vegetables section, uh, the prices are competitive. So swing by, check and ask for coupons. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but if you're a Whole Foods and there's something that you're not quite sure about, you can always ask them if you can sample that item. And as long as it, you're not there every single day asking to sample out an item, you can stop by and they'll actually um, give it to you complimentary and you can go home and try it out. Wait, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Um, so I, okay. I could I could go to Whole Foods and say, I've never tried yellow squash zoodles. Can I try that? Can I sample it? And they'll be like, here you go. They will give you the item as long as it is, you know, it's within reason as far as package. I'll give you an example. There was a freshly squeezed green juice in our uh, new juicing department that they have. And um, mm -hmm. I wanted to try it because sometimes I'm lazy and I don't want to get up and make a smoothie. So <laughs> sometimes it's easier mm -hmm. to just ask, you know, and buy it from the store. So I stopped by the cashier and I'm like, I heard that I can sample this out. She's like, oh, yeah, you know, if you ever stop by and there's something you want to try and it's within reason, you can't come up with seven or eight items. But if you have an item you want to try, they will sample it out for you and you just put it in a bag and you go home. That is amazing. But you got to talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. You can't just be walking out the store. <laughs> I'm just gonna sample, <laughs> sample all these groceries. Yo. My <laughs> oh my god! I just like I see Jasmine. I just got the visual of you like pushing a cart like out of the store, okay. and then like somebody coming after you, like ma'am, ma'am. I'm just gonna sample all these. <laughs> Don't tell them that Queen Fifty told you that you could just be rolling out the store because I do not say that. I said stop by the cashier. And ask, and I mean, they, they're really, really nice about it. Um, I've tried several different things that way. And, you know, those are things that I buy now. So great, great, great way to try before you buy. And, you know, that's great because there's been, that, there's been many a times where I have tried something. It's like, I don't know, I think that might be good. And I get it home and it's terrible. And I'm like, well, I'm out like five bucks and I can't take it back because I'm eight half of it. I'm SOL. So take a spoonful and, and I mean they do take returns if you don't like something so you know mm. try to make it an even type thing you know I don't want anybody running in there like oh I tried like 10 things you know or sending me a message on the blog like I got kicked out of Whole Foods because um, you said that we can go get some stuff <laughs> so yeah kind of just you know kind of be smart with it and um I every once in a while I'll go in there and get something and try it out um, but I, I really love that option because I'm a really picky person. So another one of one of your big topics is travel. Can you tell us about one of your like favorite, most memorable travel experiences that you have gone on as Queen Thrifty? Uh, so one of my, my most memorable experiences was the first time I actually got to go to Walt Disney World, which was a couple years back. Uh, found out mm -hmm. as a blogger and as a, um, as a journalist, you have the option to go to Disney once a year. And there's several theme parks you get the opportunity to go to. So Disney was my very first, uh, one of my very first trips to Orlando. And I had the opportunity to go down, check it out, see the castle. 
Um, at the time, he was my boyfriend, so I took him with me. And uh, we had an amazing time partnering with the Orlando business uh, Visitors Bureau uh, for uh, Visit Orlando. Uh, but my mm-hmm. most recent favorite trip was Paris. Um, I surrendered up my seat on one of our trips and ended up with a voucher. I will tell you folks, when you are on a flight or you are booking a flight, if you can come back home on a Monday or a Tuesday, make sure that you take a flight that is in the middle of the day and you have some time that you can blow. Because sometimes when you're leaving major cities, these they're 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 sold out, you know. So I take the opportunity to give up my seat at any given point of time so that I can get a flight voucher. And so I did that and okay. ended up with the twelve hundred dollar flight credit. And so we decided to go to Paris. Um, partnered with some organizations wow. in Paris and did some reviews. Uh, the full review is out on my site. Go in and keyword search Paris and it'll pop up and all the great things um, that we did in Paris are out there. But I got engaged in Paris at the Eiffel Tower, uh, which was to my surprise, I did not know. And I am still in surprise today, but um, a lot of people had the opportunity to view that. A guy videotaped it for us. And so I've shared that with my readers and anybody that will listen. That's how excited I was. Aww. (laughs) <laughs> um, but I did save about, I would say I saved about 50% on the trip to Paris by planning in advance. My goodness. Wait. Okay. So I love that you got me, you got engaged at the Eiffel tower, but I'm still kind of hung up on the, on the going to Disney as a blogger. What? Yes. <laughs> I need to know. Cause I have a baby. I need right. to know. Like you, she lives in Cali. Like she really need to know. <laughs> Let me go to Disneyland though. Like, come on. So what it is is you just have to make sure that you, that you have, um, there's certain credentials that you have to have. So with Disney, they're going to look for uh, your outreach. So the audience of people that you're talking to, if you are a blogger, blogger, or a radio host, Things like that. What do you do? How do you how are you going to bring people's attention to Disney? And then you go out and you kind of apply for it and everything. And they'll let you know within 48 hours whether or not you're approved. Okay, now I have a question. You seem to have been to a lot of different places. Um, Are there any particular events or things of that nature that you've been fortunate enough to participate in as a result of the work that you do? Um, speaking of Disney, I truly enjoy writing for Disney entertainment. I share a lot of the entertainment news for upcoming films, looking forward to, uh, the 2018 film lineup, kicking off the year with Black Panther and then going into, um, A Wrinkle in Time. There's also going to be the new Avengers four. And speaking of those movies, I had my first opportunity last year to attend a press a press junket um, on behalf of partnering with Walt Disney um, Entertainment and Films, and got to meet the entire cast of Doctor Strange. Uh, full interviews are on the site under uh, the tab for the cast interviews. And this year, I actually got to walk the red carpet for the very first time in Anaheim, California. Check you out. You were in my hood, kind of. Yeah, and I mean it was amazing. You know, you um, the the gentleman that works directly with the bloggers. Um, He has provided a lot of us with an opportunity. And who would have ever thought that bloggers actually get the chance to walk the red carpet amongst the stars? You know, we get to take pictures. I've met folks like Andre Day, um, Kerry Washington this year, Larry the Cable Guy. Yeah. So, I mean, it's truly um, wonderful. But the benefit to doing that is to be able to come back to my readers And let them know the inside scoop on, you know, what to expect as far as the experience behind the scenes of the movie, the intakes, outtakes, facts. How are the stars? Are they are they really genuine as they appear? You know, we don't give the deep, deep, deep things, but it gives you a chance to meet people, you know, that you aspire um, to watch on the big screen. So that was a wonderful thing for me, which was to walk the red carpet in Anaheim, California for Cars 3 premiere, world premiere. I'm not going to do my own horn or anything, but. I done met some celebrities. I heard that. <laughs> oh, dang it. I thought I said it under my breath or I muted myself. Couldn't remember. I, I have met some celebrities in, in my, in my day and I try to like keep it together. But I, but when I reflect on it, like I embarrass myself. I did. Mm-hmm. How do you keep from doing that? Do, are, do you ever get just like, Oh my gosh. Cause I'd probably embarrass myself in front of Carrie Washington. I'm just going to be real. How do you keep, how do you just maintain that composure? Well, honestly, when you when you get into a room, um, you realize that they're regular people like us. 
with Walt Disney, they set it up ahead of time where you know who you're going to be interviewing. So you have the opportunity to kind of interact with them as far as their tags and everything. And um, <clears throat> as we started to share throughout the journey of leading up to the world premiere for Cars 3, um, that was a very active cast. Uh, they would tweet us back, you know, they would talk to us. And so once you have the opportunity to really get in there, they're regular, ordinary, everyday people. They have issues, they have concerns. The only difference that they may have between you and I is they have money, you know, a way to pay bills and they don't have a whole lot of woes, but sometimes that may or may not be the situation. So I just look at them as regular, ordinary people and uh, keep it copacetic, you know, straight to the point. I talk to them like I would talk to anyone else. And I know they appreciate that. I mean, ultimately, they're all just some regular, degular, schmegular people. Well, my, I have a mentor and um, she's a very successful woman. And I never forget one day uh, someone had reached out to her and she renews her tickets quite often. And so the gentleman called her and he he made this big deal. And she's like, the one thing you could do, the one thing that you can do to a person that feels like they've reached a level of success is to treat them better than anyone else. And she said, some people fall for that, but the average person just wants to be the average Joe and they just want to be loved and respected. And from the day that she said that it made it very, very easy for me um, to treat those people in the, one in the same, you know? All right. So I have, I have another question for you. <laughs> Do you have any tips for people who, you know, need to get a better hold of their, their finances and need to be smarter consumers. Do you have any like tips for shopping for products, uh, travel deals, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So as it relates, I'll start with travel um, because this has been a subject that I've been doing a lot of research on. Uh, believe it or not, with the holidays approaching, a lot of us want to rush and we want to get tickets in advance and we want to be home on Christmas. We want to leave out the night before I have started to travel and purchase tickets sometimes the day of or days that are closer to it and realizing that the, the tickets are more inexpensive. So I'll give you an example. Um, this year, I wanted to go and visit my family in Virginia. And so waited till the day of and the tickets initially were four hundred and seventy something dollars. The day of they were two hundred and seventy one dollars round trip. Check you out. Does it always work like that? No. I can't guarantee that, but you know, I mean, the thing about it is no. you you got to be flexible with travel, travel, being flexible with travel is very, very, very important. When we took the trip to Paris, I looked at an, an afternoon travel flight um, for us leaving out of a bunch of different cities because the goal for me was to save money. And I look at the cheaper airlines when I'm flying directly out of home, if I need to connect to Newark or LAX. So look around at different flight patterns. Um, and I've learned one thing. Um, recently that I've taken to heart. You don't always have to book on the same airline coming and going unless you're gaining points and you're that loyal person who has to do it. I've split up my flights on United and Delta. And I mean, I've saved tons and tons and tons of money. I recently took a flight to Orlando and I paid $58 round trip because I decided I would take Allegiant and pack my purse with my clothing. So you kind of got to be flexible with travel. I would never book a flight on a Sunday or Monday. Um, even Tuesday morning, you know, if you can after about 6 a.m., but shop around because sometimes flights dip low on Wednesdays and then they pick up. So how you identify that pattern is think about your corporate travel person. What days are they traveling to get back, you know, back and front and back and forth to work? Sundays, Sundays and Mondays are going to be going back and at the latest on Tuesday. By Tuesday, Traffic kind of slows down Wednesday. It's kind of slow. And then everybody picks up on Thursday, going home Thursday, Friday. Um, I found some flights that are more inexpensive also on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. Booking hotels, I would say call the hotel directly. Ask them what type of discounts they offer. Do they offer family discounts? Do they offer military discounts? You'd be surprised how many uh, hotels offer military discounts. And this is not just for active duty. Um, they do honor their veterans. Or say, hey, I'm on a tight budget and was wondering if you could uh, comp that king room or not necessarily comp it, but hey, 10, 20 percent off. I'm a triple A member, you know, so kind of ask for those those member benefits and then also shop around on the site. Don't be afraid to sign up for all these different reward programs. Um, I'm a Hilton Honors Gold member and mm -hmm. I earned that status, you know, through our stays and things like that. 
but I decided that Hilton would be that brand that I was loyal to. And so once I started, you know, signing up, I started getting 20 and 30% off or 50% off of a weekend. And I started traveling on those days when it was inexpensive. So sign up for rewards programs as it relates to travel. And again, don't be afraid to wait till the last minute. I mean, unless it's a state of an emergency, kind of sometimes you got to wait it out a little bit and then also plan ahead um, when you're looking at some of these things. And don't be afraid to bundle uh, your packages. Uh, Mm -hmm. So that's with travel. I'll also list some additional travel things um, out on the blog if you have some questions around things directly. Uh, I'll give you an example. I have how to save on a Disney cruise that's out there, how to make the most out of a Disney park if you only have a one day hopper pass because it's ninety nine dollars, you know, for for per day. So I can tell you how to hop all three Disney parks in in one day and go to all four. Um, So there's some additional savings. So I'll tell you guys the one thing that I actually pay for and you might think it's crazy, but the AMC Rewards Club. Yes. I usually have some form of gift cards through um, the different brands that I work with. But like this year, I kind of cut back on some of um, the things that I have been working on to kind of focus on um, some things here at home. And so when it was time to renew my AMC membership, I did pay the $15. But with the $15 this year, I waited till there was a time where I got $10 back. So it made it as if I was only paying five. Mm. The $10 went towards the cost of whatever, you know, movie ticket, concessions. And then my points duplicate, my, my points add up a lot faster. But I do also go to a ton of different movie screenings and I utilize, you know, several different sources to pay for it. Mm -hmm. So if I have to pay out of pocket, I'll go to the store and purchase a $25 gift card or a $50 gift card so I can get fuel perks. And then that's 20 cent off my gas. So you got to look at what you invest in and what you're getting out of it. Gems, y'all. Y'all hear that? Y'all taking notes? I better hear pen to paper. Gems. So I never, if you can go to your local store and buy gift cards, Go before you go to JCPenney's, go there before you go to Disneyland, purchase those gift cards and stack up on your rewards towards your fuel purchase. Um, We were able to fill up a few times, almost for nothing this summer. Dang. See, I'm not doing it right. I'm over here getting 5% Mm. off my purchases at Target. mm, We're not going to talk about that. Right. Mm. And that's already marked up 5%, but we're not going to go there. But Target does price match. I, I can tell you guys on another segment we'll, we'll revisit, but there's definitely a way to save money at Target. I, this year, have saved, if I had to stay consistent with Target, but I've already saved over, over $1,000 using Cartwheel Manufacturer Coupons and the coupons from the Target site, Target Exclusive Coupons, and then also with the 5% red card discount. See, I'm doing all of that except for the manufacturer's coupons. I, mm. yeah, man, them coupons be getting on my nerves. I say that and act like I don't like money. Like, like I just love giving it away. I need to get on my coupons. But yes, I'm on my cartwheel. I'm on my Target coupons, red card. I, I'm not getting any fuel points, though. There has to be a store where you live at that offers that. So we'll kind of revisit that offline and I'll get you hooked up. Thanks, girl. Thank you. And, you know, I, I, might, I might write a little song song from the blog so I can pass on the knowledge to you guys, too, because I know you want to hear it. Related to coupons. The ads come out in advance, so go to your local favorite store site and sign up. You'll get that ad sometimes on Thursday or Friday. Kind of look and plan ahead. Once you get used to coupons, you'll know the cycles. Sales cycles are consistent. And uh, make sure you're signed up for in-store rewards programs. That way you can earn different savings. And don't be afraid to to take a chance and see if those matchups work. You know, if they don't, I mean, you just put the coupon in your pocket and you plan for next time. Um, I've walked out of a store and be like, hey, I'm not going to get anything. I'm just going to come back when I figure this out. Um, so it's a trial and error. But also go out and Google um, your frugal bloggers that are local in your area. Um, I cannot tell you guys that I can give everybody the lowdown on saving in stores because we live in different regions. But I can always always refer you to a blogger that's within your area that handles deals. And I mean, I have people that I trade with. I trade coupons. <laughs> so... <laughs> and I trade with yes. people from here to Hawaii. So I can always connect you with your frugal blogger that's in your area um, that actually writes deals for those specific stores and will match up the ads for you. And they'll tell you where to go print your coupons. All right. So by match up, you mean like you have a coupon for, let me say, uh, cream of mushroom soup and a store happens to have cream of mushroom soup on sale. Is that what you mean by match up? Like you have a coupon and a deal in store? 
Yes. So um, an example would be kind of like today. Well, I'll say yesterday. So yesterday, folks were asking me about savings on a tablet. And so I came across a tablet that was on sale and I broke down to them. And a breakdown is when the blogger gives you the, the original cost all the way down to the sales cost minus the coupon itself. There's going to be a page where, you know, they're going to give you the, the original cost of the product. And if there's a coupon that's printable or if it came in the Sunday paper, they're going to tell you how to get all of those things and, you know, how to save money and how long that sale is going to run for you. So they give you the lowdown yes. on everything. Would you consider yourself an extreme couponer? No, um, I am a frugal diva. I am queen thrifty, meaning <laughs> that. I believe in life and adventure at an economic splurge, but I believe in doing it legitimately. Um, when I look at some of the things that the extreme couponers, um, that they do in a sense, those are things that are not always ethical. I've kind of seen some of the things and I know how the stores have changed over time. So I've gotten to a point where I don't go in and buy nine things of mustard. I am to the point where now I simply only buy the things that I need and I restock um, when necessary. Um, so no, I am queen thrifty and I'm a frugal diva. PSA from queen thrifty. Yeah. Quick PSA. <laughs> yes. Look, now people going to be changing Always their shirt. PSA. Like I'm a frugal diva. <laughs> Trademark copyright queen thrifty. <laughs> hey, you better. I was about to say, you better create some merch. Otherwise they're going to be out here. It's going to be on fashion Nova. It's going to be everywhere. Oh, no. Not fashion Nova. <laughs> Cardi B is gonna have it. She's gonna be like fashion Nova, baby. But no, like when I watch when I watch those extreme couponer shows, it seems like the people they go into like a small, like not a big mega chain grocery store, like a Target or a Walmart, and they have like I'm buying 17 packs of mustard and 15 packs of hot dogs. We're wow. vegetarian, but I can't pass up on this deal. And it's like, I'm always just like, why are you even doing that? But it's so weird. Yeah, it just doesn't seem right. Because now I can't buy the hot dogs that I need for my baby. So hmm. I'm not sure if some of those shows are legit as they used to be, because I will tell you that there are limitations. So when you see that for some of those stores, please don't think that if you clip 40 of those coupons that the manager is going to let you walk out like that, because sometimes they're not going to let you be great. <laughs> they're like, no, ma'am, limit two. <laughs> Does not double. <laughs> uh, as Des and I, we were talking about earlier, like this is our side hustle. Like we, we, we do our, we podcast, we, we got the blog popping off, like we have our, our thing on the side that we are both very passionate about. Just like you have your, your day job as a project manager and evening queen thrifty. Um, do you have any advice to budding side hustling entrepreneurs out there on how they can break into the blogging influencer travel industry like you have? Uh, I would say to really kind of just focus and make sure it is something that you really want to do. Because once you start writing up these reviews, um, it's kind of hard to back out of. You become an ambassador for a variety of brands. And so you uphold um, a, a relationship that you manage. And so you have a lot to overturn. Um, I would say that I work full time as a blogger. So make sure that the time that you um, have available, you can actually commit to it. You know, and it's got to be something that you're passionate about. Uh, I recommend going out and doing a free blog first before you try to actually monetize and build relationships and write on something that you really can talk about, you know, that really builds an audience and content that pulls people in. Um, it's just, it, it, you got to have fun with it, you know? And so I love listening to you ladies uh, like I did last mm -hmm. week. It's something that you're fun and you're passionate about. When you're funny, you're passionate about it. People can see it and they can relate to it. And so that's kind of how you break into the blog industry. But uh, as we've always said, and our ancestors have told us, networking. It's all about who you know and who you talk to. And blogging is also about who you know and who you talk to. But start a free blog. Um, check out WordPress.com, um, WordPress.org, or Blogspot. Um, I would try any of those or Wix, you know, and kind of get an idea or you know, talk to some local bloggers, join some groups, do some networking events in your local city before you dive head first and, and just make sure it's something you really want to do and you've got the time to do it. Thank you. Thank you for that. Hey, the pool is big. It's enough for all of us to swim and there are a ton of fish to be caught. 
but you got to have the time to do it. And there's some nights where I'm in bed at 11, 12 o'clock working on my Pinterest or I'm responding to comments, you know, so dedication and hard work comes with anything. And at the end of the day, I love what I do from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed. But most importantly, I make sure that I consider my family and how it works out, you know, for my fiance while I'm doing it. Are there any upcoming events or um, experiences maybe out West or like near me that you're looking forward to? Just because I feel like you're doing so many different things in different places that I think it'd be great, especially for some of our West Coast listeners, um, because we do have a decent um, following from there to know, you know, just what kind of opportunities are out there when you play your cards right. I've had much success in LA. I've always had a great time. Um, I was had the opportunity to be in LA last year, you know, an opportunity to go this year. And so I look forward to catching the All-Star game this year um, in February. That just depends because that's the same weekend that Black Panther comes out. So, you know, I, I think I might not be able to make it because Black Panther is like at the top of my list. Uh, but if you got like some extra all-star tickets mm-hmm. i was gonna say because my snapback body will be ready by then <laughs> i won't eat anything until february <laughs> anything where are the celebrities at <laughs> well see i'm engaged so i'm not searching you know like if this had been seven years ago i might actually care but i don't know if you guys are aware black panther is this actual marvel film will be the first african-american um, superhero, you know, for Marvel. And so it has an all star cast Chuck with Bosman, and Bassett, Forrest Whitaker, Lupita, Michael B. Oh, Jordan, my dang. boo. Yeah. So I, um, I'm head mm. over heels. I mean, like purse, t shirt, whole nine. Oh, wow. That's what I'm looking for. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm watching it. Yes. Whenever I can that weekend. That's but, you it. know, like I can only be inside for so long. I can, I can make time for basketball. You feel me? I can make time for for an all star game with somebody's Aubrey Drake Graham and somebody's <laughs> other rappers and celebrities and yes. producers and men. You got to get you a girl who can do both. Who can go to the movies and the basketball. Exactly. Game. I can be pro black out here repping for the Black Panthers, <laughs> and I can be pulling all the men's men's with an S <laughs> yes. or a Z. If you're feeling nasty, dating is part of the frugal lifestyle. I will say, um, you can still date and be frugal. Because uh, King Thrifty, you know, on our first day, we use coupons. That's cute. Yes. Wait, okay. I, I want to know, how did you guys meet? We met through a mutual friend. And your first yeah. date, was it like a blind date? Or had y'all like been in each other's company before that first date? Uh, so how we initially, initially met, um, he was shopping um, at the local mall. And at the time, like I said, I hustle. So I've had at times three to four jobs. And um, I happened to be selling fine jewelry mm. for Macy's. Yes. I had just got, I had just started my master's program and needed to pay for, you know, the, the, the fees that they assessed. And so um, he was sent to come shop with me and we met then. And then a year later, we reunited, not at the best of circumstances, but we were there to support a mutual friend at a funeral. And so it kind of stemmed from there. I got a call that um, there was someone that wanted to have the opportunity to meet me and they had heard great things about me and um, was kind of going through a rough patch in my life, trying to figure out what I wanted to do with myself. And uh, we had a couple conversations. I was traveling a lot, visiting my sister in Chicago. So one day I sat down and I said, well, I want to take the time to actually get to know this guy and kind of meet him and came to town, came back home to Cleveland, which is where I probably should have been. But I flew back in from Chicago and called him one evening and we met and um, it went from us just meeting to go out and hang out on a date to almost being eight years later to where this is the love of my life. Um, I could not imagine the days uh, without him and the opportunity to, you know, come home to him, tell him about the things that is going on in my life and and hear his as well. Um, I've never met someone that works as hard as me and that's sometimes harder than me. Um, so that I can be able to pursue my dreams as well as him. Li- he lives within his, but he's definitely one of my biggest motivators. And that's very important to me. Um, but I had to find a man that I can deal with. I can't just be with anybody. And um, he's definitely been my foreman. That was beautiful. So good men do exist. They just hard to find. <laughs> so let them find you. Uh, you know, those memes where the skeleton be just like, I'll be, I'll be waiting here for you. That's going to be me. I'm going to be the skeleton just waiting by the phone. Just. <laughs> 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 yo perpetual waiting 
I but I have one more question before we wrap it up, and this is one that I didn't get to ask you before. But wedding expenses are marked up; it's crazy. Like that is a whole billion dollar industry in its own right. Have you had much success in finding ways to save on venues and catering and and all that stuff? Are you or is this like the industry where you're having a hard time finding the the thrifty savings? Um, again, as a blogger, I have brand partnerships, and so. I've looked at how to utilize those partnerships and the benefits, not only for myself, but for um, the client. So I've kind of wrapped some things around my blog where we'll go into bridal stuff in January. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be introducing ways to purchase items for your engagement party or how to purchase items um, for your centerpieces or your bridal party and things like that. I don't want to give too much. Um, because I, I'll, it'll be full fledged in January, but I have had success with um, traveling to. I'm having a destination wedding, so traveling to actually visit the venues, and um, you know when I go back to actually have my wedding, I've kind of found some ways not to necessarily cut you know complete expenses because when it does come to something that's very important like that, I do I do truly believe in making sure that I do have the best of the best. But at the same time, I am that person where, I, you know, I'm going to shop around and be like, OK, well, I've seen this for 20 percent less. So what you going to do? <laughs> right. So I do still price match. I do still shop around, mm -hmm. but there will be a full bridal gift guide savings type thing. And I'm going to try to partner with um, some organizations around um, all inclusive travel and honeymoons and, you know, what when's the best time. I know when is the best time to take a trip, but I want to make sure that I have some factual information to give people on that. So. Um, I'll be getting married next year on September 15th. And I would say that for the most part, I have already started saving on some of those things, but I'm not going to cut down to the bare bones of cost because at the end of the day, it is my wedding. It's like the biggest party of your life. Yeah. And it's, it's a very important day to me. So um, I'm not going to, you know, go to the extreme where I don't have a DJ and I don't have flowers, but there's a way for me to get flowers and there's a way for me to work and utilize um, having my blog and working with the DJ, you know, whether it be to promote his services across social media, send him some clients and referrals, things like that. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for teasing up your blog. Do you mind telling the listeners uh, your site so that they can go check you out and what you got offered for them for uh, the holiday season? Ooh, so it has already launched. It is live. I have a holiday extravaganza giveaway and I'm going to be giving away several different things from a Disney DVD collection, um, the state connected luggage tag sponsored by eBags, four holiday cookbooks, a prize pack from Bath and Body Works, courtesy of Queen Thrifty. Also something from Victoria's Secret, a little special secret. Okay. Um, Arctic okay. Cool Gear, they're sponsoring a prize pack. And then we are going to have some women's boots winter boots that is going to be sponsored by lugs and then there'll be a few other surprises in there but yeah the giveaway is live so head on over to queenthrifty.com and enter um if you want to find me on social media type in queen thrifty and the only site that i am different on um is queen thrifty 614 that is instagram all right. So yeah, that's queenthrifty.com and queenthrifty all over the social medias, except Instagram, queenthrifty614. Yes. Awesome. Now, just so I know, can I win any of these giveaways? Because, you know, now I'm about to go enter them since you told me everything is up for grabs. Actually, we're doing it differently this year. We're not going to do an individual prize drawing. One person is going to win all of the prizes on the site. What? And most of them will be shipped directly from our great sponsors and our wonderful partners um, that support the site, as well as me supporting them. And then there are some small gifts that I've thrown in myself. And I am thinking about a great possibility of putting in one of our uh, our hot electronics tech items this year. I won't tell that yet. Though. Uh -oh. All right. So, yeah, I'm entering. Me too. All right. Well, Queen Thrifty, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Thanks for having me. And listeners, let us know if there's anything that you are looking to save on while you're holiday shopping, planning for travel, you know, whatever, you know, just, just, just let us know. Hit us up on Instagram, hashtag EBPR, hashtag thrifty. 
Um, and then also send Queen Thrifty an email as well. Um, it's queenthrifty1 at gmail.com. Um, before we before we wrap it up, we have some shout outs to give. Oh my gosh, Des, can you just talk about this week that we just had? Can you just... Oh, just... yes. Okay. So guys, we have to thank everyone from, I swear it was like virtually every country across the world. Um, we received so much love this week, especially on one of our Instagram posts. If you don't know which Instagram post we're talking about, we suggest you go lurk on our Instagram page and see. Hint, hint, it may or may not have something to do with the royal engagement, but we received a lot of love from people all over. Um, and some of our top countries that we, re- we received love from were the United States. <laughs> Hi, I guess. France. Thank you all so much. Merci. And the UK. So shout out to all of our UK friends and men's and homies and everybody. We really appreciate all the love we receive. Some of our top cities for this past week were Frankfurt, Germany. Ow, ow. I don't, I don't know how to say thank you. Uh, guten, guten Tag. No, no, that ain't it. Guten? No. Danke schön. How do you say that? Danke schön. Yeah, that might not we, be we don't work on that. We don't work on that. <laughs> We're going to work on all of this. I got to learn you. some more languages. I'm doing the most. Um, Germ, or excuse me, Newark, New Jersey. Oh, or excuse me, Nork. 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 <laughs> Nork, New Jersey. First time somebody said that to me, I was like, I'm sorry. I live in New York. What are you saying? Nork. Nork. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce this, so I'm just going to say Harlem. Um, but it, it's like Harlem, Netherlands. So, um, <laughs> shout out to you guys, knock off Harlem. I appreciate you. Actually, those are, those are a great, I have some folks that follow my blog. Um, from there, they're a really wonderful group of people to connect with. So that's uh, awesome. Yes. Look, look, y'all good peeps in my book. Shout out to yes. you. Yes. Ha- Harlem. Ha- Harlem. Harlem. And sorry if I'm offending you by that pronunciation. I'm so sorry. They're probably like they're going off on us in Dutch, like as we sit here and butcher <laughs> their city's name. Unsubscribe, unsubscribe. No, please don't. <laughs> please, please. This is meant to make you laugh, not to upset yes. you. Yes. <laughs> All right, and then our our final uh, shout out our top listeners. We have Christopher C. Hello, hello, Boo from the UK. Hello. Yes, hello, Chris. I appreciate you. I really do appreciate you. Christopher, just so everybody knows, like Christopher is like one of the best fans ever, as is our next one. Jazz, can you tell us who, who our next super fan is? Yeah, that is Ayana Chanel. Did I say that right, Ayana? Ayana. Yep. You let me she, know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ayana Chanel, so much love. Thank you so much, girl, for your continued support. And then our, our final shout out goes to Sean Skeet. What's good? Hey. What's happening? Skeet, 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 skeet. Hello. <laughs> You're just like, wait, wait. That's not what that means. <laughs> no. Wait. <laughs> to the window. <laughs> you know what? I'm done. I'm done. Okay. Yes. Thank you guys so, 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 so much for your love this past week. And, and thank you for, for being behind us. And, you know, look, in a, like in a couple of weeks, you can say like, yeah, I was I was listening to them back before they had all them followers. Facts. You, you ain't new to it. You was true to it. It's actually loyal. It's good to be loyal ahead of time. You know, so folks be like, they remember me back then. Now I'm hot. They all on me. <laughs> I was just about to say it. Back then they didn't want us. Listen, between the two of you and these throwbacks to these songs that are that remind me of my inner ratchet 17 year old like I'm feeling it tonight like I'm really feeling it so thank you both for for referencing those songs that I now need to add to Apple Music but I just want y'all to know that over in other countries they do listen to our music because when I was in Paris I had an amazing time at the hip-hop club I feel like I was at home they were kicking it it was dope it was pretty dope Yes. Well, before we wrap up this episode, we wanted to share a special offer with you, our lovely listeners, from our sponsor, Audible. Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. Uh, Queen Thrifty, is there any particular book that you are currently reading and or listening to that our listeners might be able to find on Audible? I am uh, reading Oprah's new book, Oprah Winfrey's new book, Wisdom of Sundays, and it is available on Audible. Yeah. Yes, I am. I'm gonna have to check that one out. I didn't know Oprah put out a new book, but now now I got to add that one to the rotation. Yes. This week I am listening to "You Are a Badass" by 
um, Jen Sincero. I think I'm, I think it's in that right. Jen Sincero. So yeah, you are a badass. How to stop doubting your greatness and start living an awesome life. She's funny, super like super funny. And it's she this yeah earlier this year she released the sequel. You are a badass at making money. That is going to be next on the on the docket. And then after that, the book by Oprah. Yes. All right, Des, what are you listening to? Well, you know me and my love for literature. So this week, yet again, I'm doing a reread or a re-listen um, of The House on Mango Street by Sandra Cisneros. Um, classic, oldie but goodie. But listen, I, I love it. I love it so much. I love it. I recommend it to everybody. I recommend you ladies read Wonder. Oh, that's the movie that came out a couple weeks ago, right? It was phenomenal, yes. The book was actually sent to me, and I've had the opportunity to read it a few times. But I know some educators that um, are really pushing for their their uh, their class to actually go see the movie and read the book. And I believe that even as adults, we don't realize it, but we do bully people, and we look at people that don't look what we expect them to. And so it kind of sets you, it sets you straight. Let's just say that. Oh, I might need to, yeah, I might definitely have to read that book. mm I might need that after my weekend in LA. Like I've I've been shading people for far too long. I'm so sorry. <laughs> me. You've been shading me for far too long. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Well, to download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com slash EBPR podcast. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash EBPR podcast for your free audiobook. Yes. We also want to remind you of our special offer from our friends at Texture. They are offering a free 14-day trial to use their service. So check it out at ebprpodcast.com slash texture. Thank you all so much for listening. If you're not already, please be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any episodes. That's right. We publish a new episode every Wednesday. If you need a little more from Des and I, uh, check out our website, ebprpodcast.com. Again, that's ebprpodcast.com. All right, Des, Queen Thrifty, it's been lovely chatting with you ladies. Likewise. Yes, thank you so much again, Queen Thrifty, for stopping by the show. Like, I can't wait to look into your blog and, oh, I'm so excited. I'm about to save so much money, hopefully. Like I said, I love sharing deals. I love assisting people with saving money. No matter what time it is, shoot me a message and when I can, I'll get back to you. Thank you. All right. Have a good one, guys. Good night. All right. Good night.